We are going to occupy every space. And we have been gentlemen for far too long. We are now going to appropriate our place because we have a contribution to make. We want to be at the table because we are told the risk, the risk of not being at the table is that you could be in the menu. <laughs> Kenya's president, William Ruto, delivered a powerful keynote speech at the third Pan-African Parliamentarian Summit on climate policy and equity. Listen closely to some of his thought-provoking sentiments. Good people, let me ask you, who said that Africa cannot be part of the solution? That when Africa is being discussed, it's only being discussed in the context of the problems. Africa has 30 to 40 percent of the world's minerals, including those on which the green energy transition depends. The availability of these significant deposits makes a compelling case for Africa to be a global hub for manufacturing. All we are saying is we are coming with our assets, come with investment and technology, we meet halfway and everybody wins. That's all we are saying. Instead of exporting the iron ores and the bauxite to be processed in Europe and China, if the decision was reversed so that we still get the same steel, but this time round, it is processed in Africa. You don't have to transport the ores. Use the renewable energy in Africa instead of the fossil fuel and, and uh, uh, um, uh, carbon energy in, in Europe. It is a simple decision. We will still get the steel for everybody, but let's change the paradigm. Instead of transporting iron ore and engaging in huge footprints of carbon, let us process the iron ores and the bauxite in Africa. And we are willing. Once it is processed in Africa, we will sell the steel to our friends. We will do two things. We will have created jobs in our continent. We will have done green for everybody, green industrialization for everybody. We will have reduced emissions for everybody. And we will have contributed to solving this big equation of carbon emissions. Let me also say the following, that as nations, the whole reform agenda around the AU is a necessary imperative. It is not possible for us as states, as governments, to hold all the power and expect the African Union to function. We must be courageous enough, we must be bold enough to delegate some of the powers of our nations to the collective body of the Africa Union. That is what other progressive unions have done. We have made a decision very respectfully as heads of state in Africa that any engagement with other partners must be an engagement of equals. And for it to be meaningful, for it to be meaningful, if we are going to meet the president of a country, we have organized ourselves that the Troika is going to represent Africa. The chair, the current chair, the past chair, the chair that is coming, and the heads of our uh, regional economic uh, commissions, about six, seven people. But what happens continuously? When others want to engage with us, they don't want to deal with the Troika. They want to invite 50 heads of state. 
So we go to a meeting, just explain to me what kind of outcome you expect where 50 heads of state are sitting. Everybody is asked to speak to one and a half minutes. We speak to one, for one and a half minutes. What kind of engagement are you going to get? You're going to get nothing, right? The best that you get is photographs. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Some of the people who invite us to these meetings tell us, if you don't come, there will be consequences. So, all of us are, are forced to go to a meeting that has no meaningful outcome because of blackmail. This is not right, good people. So if you are one head of state and you want to engage all these people, surely, are you sincere? You know, in, in engaging in a crowd? You, because some of these uh, good people, they want to avoid any commitments, you know? They, they want to av avoid any meaningful engagement. They just want a baraza and uh, okay, okay, pictures, pictures, and then we go. Dinner, and then... I mean, good people, we have food in our countries, at least, we can eat at home. We want to be at the table, because we are told the risk, the risk of not being at the table is that you could be in the menu. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> so, we are going to occupy every space. And we have been gentlemen for far too long. We are now going to appropriate our place because we have a contribution to make. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening to me. I don't take it for granted. And God bless you.